got a Fox News alert on this Friday morning. President Trump pledging to end the diversity visa program after it was revealed that the suspect in that New York City truck attack earlier in the week entered the United States through that program. Diversity lottery sounds nice. It's not nice. It's not good. It's not good. It hasn't been good. We've been against it. So we want to immediately work with Congress on the diversity lottery program, on terminating it, getting rid of it. We want a merit-based program where people come into our country based on merit. So why is the left so silent on this diversity uh, program? Sean Parnell is a retired U.S. Army Ranger, the uh, CEO of Branding, um, excuse me, Branding Freedom and the author of Outlaw Platoon. Great book. And he joins us today uh, with more on this. So, Sean, what are your thoughts on this uh, diversity program? Well, I've never heard of it before. I always knew that the immigration system in this country was broken, something that needed to be fixed for a very long time, but I never heard of it before. And, and what, what blows me away about all of this, and, and Rob, you know a lot about this, but we face the greatest asymmetric threat of our time. ISIS is in over 100 countries globally actively operating. There's, there's an active ISIS investigation in mm -hmm. all 50 states. Mm -hmm. They've said that they're going to try to penetrate our broken immigration system, yet we've done nothing about it. Uh, this has been on the book since uh, Charles Schumer inserted it into the larger 1990 Immigration Act that passed. And I understand the gang of eight tried to get rid of it a couple of years ago, but that didn't go anywhere. So it's still on the books. But if you are lucky enough to be one of the 5,000 people, and the whole idea was to get as many people from uh, co countries where not a lot of immigration happens toward mm -hmm. the United States. If you were one of the 5,000 people from Uzbekistan. You then got to invite as many people, essentially, you were related to. This guy who mowed over all those people brought 23 people into the country. The, yeah, it's, it's safe to say that this terrorist attack does not happen, and these eight people are alive today if this program doesn't exist. And again, uh, we have been fighting a, a global war on Islamic terror for over a third of my life. My entire professional adult life has been finding, tracking down, and killing these guys. We know that they, that they exploit our freedom. We know that they use PC political correctness as a cloaking device to move around, the, move around countries and conduct attacks. Yet we haven't done anything about it. And look, immigration is going to be the greatest national security issue of our time. Um, we have to stop these guys at the border before they get into the country, because once they get into the country, it's far more difficult to stop them from conducting attacks. Sean, one of the things that I want to bring up, not a lot of people in this country have fought some of the people from these areas like you and I have. Mm -hmm. in, in your book, Outlaw Platoon, the first day you got to your FOB, you're engaged in a fight. And a lot of these foreign fighters are from Uzbekistan. Can you describe just the ferocity and the ideology that, and what, what, what these people are it's like? A, it's a great question because we, we always said we fought a global jihadist all-star team over there. Actually, the, the guys that we fought, we couldn't even find an interpreter that could speak Uzbek within the first couple months of the deployment. Most of, most of, our, most of my time in Afghanistan was was spent fighting Uzbeks. So how did you talk to the locals? Well, we didn't for a long time until we were able to find an interpreter that could, that could, because, I mean, look, you can monitor their commo, listen to their yeah. ICOM radio mm -hmm. chatter and try to figure out how and when they're going to attack you. But we couldn't do that because they were speaking five or six different languages. And they, they are the most ferocious fighters you could possibly imagine. These are guys in, in Afghanistan mm -hmm. that cut their teeth against the Russians in the 80s, fought mm -hmm. in the Afghan Civil War in the 90s, and then against uh, Americans in a post 9 11 mm -hmm. Afghanistan. They are the, the, their average, the average foreign fighter in Afghanistan has probably 20 years combat experience on your average American private, which is unbelievable. Can you touch on, on um, when you finally figured out what they were saying, what they were telling their troops with the big knives? What, what were their instructions to, to overrun you? Yeah, so back in 2006, <clears throat> the, the eyes of the world were focused wholeheartedly on Iraq mm -hmm. and the surge. Was it working? Was it not? Uh, and while that was all going on, my platoon was on a remote outpost in Afghanistan just listening to these guys as they talked about cutting our heads off, overrunning us and cutting our heads off. That was their only mission. They, they wore these, and some of the, much of the fighting that we, that we were in over there, uh, was, some of it was close to hand-to-hand. -hand. And you could see the 8-inch knives on their belts because mm. all they wanted to do was overrun us and cut our heads off and post our heads on stakes, put a video out there for the world to see. Uh, they never got that opportunity because we killed them in such great numbers, but uh, they tried. Okay. That's how you win. That's how you win. All right. Sean Parnell, we thank you very much. Once again, the book is called Outlaw Platoon. Thank you. Thank sir. you. Thank you guys for having me.